Welcome and thanks for joining me for Pathfinder Kingmaker. This is Journeys in the Stolen Lands and we are just leaving the bandit camp here. We uh, hired some bandits to help us um, collect taxes from people. Not sure how that's going to work out. May have been a mistake. But we'll see what happens, I guess. We're going to make camp here before we head on to the Kobold Trail. Okay, we camped and we made our way kind of roundabout here actually to Kobold Trail. Okay, I, I wondered if maybe this was going to be just a, a storybook thing. I, I thought maybe I remembered that. The hills seemed pleasant, even welcoming. No gray doom and gloom, just walking along the path and enjoying the view of all the cute little white pyramids built out of pebble stone. Or wait, was it pebble stone? Horror of horrors, what I mistook for pebbles were polished bones. All along the path, the grass was riddled with pyramids made of polished kobold remains. It got us to thinking, is it wise to follow such a grim path, the way marked by death itself? Defying all danger, we followed the path. Trying to brush away thoughts on who may have polished the kobold vertebrae and why, we quickly moved along the path leading through the pale hills. It didn't take long for us to reach a mountain river with a bridge crossing over it. Well, bridge may be a bit generous, it was actually just a long branch about as thick as an arm, spanning from one bank to the other. It may have been enough for a kobold to cross since we could see another of those small bone pyramids on the far side, but it didn't look nearly strong enough for our party to cross. Before deciding how to proceed, we carefully examined the river. We quickly discovered that the river was quite deep. I plunged my arm shoulder deep into the water and couldn't even feel the bed. Okay, Lindsay's arms probably aren't very long. <laughs> so, was that really a very good measuring stick? I'm not sure. It was fast, too. The current pulled a dried leaf off my sleeve and it was gone from my sight in a blink. And it was cold, very, very cold. Frankly, none of us were interested in taking a swim. We carefully examined the branch that would help us cross the river. The branch did have one thing going for it, though. Being so thick, it happened to be quite sturdy. But that didn't make the flimsy crossing any less slippery or challenging to anyone daring to set foot on it. I wonder how many kobolds have slipped on the wet bark and found a watery grave in the ice-cold river. Okay, we talked it over and chose a volunteer to try crossing the river. So we're going to have a mobility, athletics, and strength check here. I guess Kane is going to have to be him. He's got these two pretty well covered. The mobility uh, could be a problem. All right. Kane was unperturbed by the thin branch and the speeding current. After a deep breath, our volunteer set forth along the precarious crossing. One step, then another. A few feet crossed with no trouble, and I started to think that maybe things would be fine. That's when the branch jerked and started to shake. It was rolling over. With no time to think, all Kane could do was... Alright, we'll jump to the other side. Okay. Oh, the lengths we'll go to in our efforts to keep our pride untarnished and our pants dry. One incredible jump and Kane was on the other bank. Kane took a moment to catch his breath and turned his attention back to the crossing. A nearby shrub concealed an amusing kobold contraption, a crooked ladder built from random planks and sticks. It seems the kobolds crossed the river in much the same way we had, sending their most agile companion across to fling the ladder over to the other side. Losing no more time, we crossed the river. One small pyramid made of polished kobold bones may be a bit spooky, but it's not unbearable. But how about thousands? We found ourselves looking over a proper kobold graveyard, each little pyramid a mark of a kobold death, and that mark made out of their own remains. Yeesh. The real enigma, though, waited in the heart of the burial ground. Centerpiece was made of hundreds, maybe even thousands, of polished bones, all put together to form the head of an enormous dragon. Imagine it, these small, nonsensical reptiles somehow managed to create a sculpture both fearsome and magnificent. Such might and yet such frailty as well. If a single bone were to be removed from the foundation, this beautiful statue would crumble to dust. And I even spotted one such flimsy bone. Regardless, we'd come face to face with irrefutable proof the kobolds, for better or worse, were changing. This news had no impact on our search for the trolls, though the land was clearly sacred to the kobolds, and it seemed unlikely they would bring their new friends here. 
But how would the Baron deal with the structure we found in his realm? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm really probably going to avoid the chaotic evil choices. The Baron left, leaving the kobold shrine untouched. Without a word, Baron turned and followed the same trail of dead that had led us to the heart of the Pale Hills. Let time, the elements, and the gods decide what to do about the kobolds, their strange religion, and their nation artistic ability. His grace would just watch from a distance. We didn't waste any time with the dragon head, and on our way back, our luck finally turned. A family of wild boars had decided to take a rest right in the middle of what they must have thought was a long abandoned path. One lucky shot and a plump piglet made its way to our backpacks, soon to be a hearty meal. Okay. So I can't remember what we did in my last playthrough. I don't know if we destroyed the shrine. Um, I'm not sure if destroying it leads to something else here. But I guess we're done at Kobold Trail. That seemed to be it. Check out Ekun's leads. Not sure why that quest still shows up there. I don't think we can do anything else there. I guess we'll head to the camp then that just showed up. Okay. Kobold Camp. You see a gang of kobolds resting around a campfire. When they finally notice you, they jump up and start scuttling around, making a mess and bumping into each other, all the while muttering something in their hissing language. One kobold emerges from the swarming crowd. His scales are a touch lighter than those of his companions. Upon closer inspection, he seems to be extremely old. His skin is dry and lifeless, and he clearly lost some of his scales long ago. There's something curious about this kobold. He seems to be calm, confident, and wise. Slargs. Slargs. The old kobold hisses. The rest of the kobolds immediately calm down. Greetings, he says, addressing you and sticking out his hand. Greetings. 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 <laughs> Greetings. Shake the kobold's hand. You shake the old kobold's hand, it's slimy and cold. He continues to stare, his eyes still, yellow, and emotionless. <laughs> kobolds, humans, love. <laughs> Ends. <laughs> kobold. Or two, king, search. Yes. You guys have to repeat everything he says? The old kobold seems to have said his piece, so he just continues to stare at you with cold, still eyes. Tartuk, what a familiar name. Tell me, do you know the story of the suit scale kobold tribe? Suit scale bad, not friend. Alright, let's get this sorted out. All of the kobolds are staring at you now, no blinking or movement among them. It's starting to get uncomfortable. Tartuk trolls love search Tartuk kobold. Succeed a wisdom check. Over several minutes, you manage to piece together that these kobolds are looking for their king Tartuk, who's lost somewhere. After several minutes beyond that, you deduce that this Tartuk somehow managed to befriend some trolls. Why are you looking for Tartuk? Because they love him. Can point him toward the Hodag's lair. I saw the Hodag lair on the map. That I think that's where we need to take Amiri. I don't know where the troll's lair is or where Tartuk is hiding. I'd recommend you give up the search, but that's for you to decide. Unable to judge the expression on his snout, you can't tell if the old kobold is upset by your statement. After you answer, he turns away from you as if you ceased to exist. The kobolds quickly gather and leave into the woods. Kobolds are nasty little creatures. Bigger monsters only tend to notice them if they happen to step on one. And yet, un yet surprisingly, kobolds here are treated with respect. This is very suspicious. The local kobolds hold one of their own in high esteem, a shaman named Tartuk. How do you impress such despicable creatures anyway? By being the most vile and cowardly of them all? Okay, so I think we that must be out. it for this location. But we need to follow them, I guess. I don't remember if they eventually... It's so hard to remember some things from the, my last playthrough, even though it's not like it was that long ago. 
we head back out. See if there's anything new on the map. I know we can head toward the Hodag there. We got we do have this clearing here. I think that was one of Ekun's, yeah. Okay. And alright, the Dwarven Ruins. This, I think. This is the one we need to take Harim and Jubilost to. I know we've got the Lizard Folk Village and the Candlemere Tower. But I know we go to eventually. I'm I'm just not sure that we want to do that yet. So do we head toward the Hodag Lair? I think we head toward the Troll Clearing. Or we stop at the Swamp Witch's Hut. Maybe that makes more sense since it's right right here. Okay, we rested up. I noticed we're carrying a ton of rations. Somehow ended up with 19 of them. Down to 17. I guess it's not affecting our weight too much. It would be nice to be down in light, but... I'll take medium. All right, let's let's go ahead check out the swamp witch's hut. I know there's actually a fair amount going on here, so we might be there a little while. But we can go ahead and meet her before we head to these other areas down here. Okay, we're gonna do a little preparation, get some spells on people, inspire. Move on up a little bit, Amaya. And Bruin. We shouldn't have too much trouble with these boars. Let's let's save our solid spell uses. Okay, Kane. See, he can't even reach. Can he reach with the charge? No. Alright, just move up here then. Way. And leopard in there. Okay, I don't know why we didn't cast that fireball last time, but I actually think we might as well just save it. Your death awaits. I think we could even just real time this. Kane will get in there, start swatting. Oh, I, don't, I guess we'll leave Troll Reaper on him. I don't know if we should be switching back to his greatsword. And has taken some heat there. Is all this blood mine? Okay, Never Bruin. Give her a little healing. Okay, we've got a Will O Wisp attacking. They should have known better. Wonderful. Um, we're gonna maybe want some resist electricity. I did buy a couple scrolls. Protection from electricity. I think we actually can't remember. I think we want okay that. Protection gives us temporary immunity. So I think that just absorbs the damage until it's discharged. The resist electricity actually just gives us an amount of resistance to it. I don't know if we should use our one scroll. I think... Hmm... See if we can even hit them. Did I think Alora learned a resist energy spell, but she doesn't have it memorized. Well, okay, Bruin, let's let's actually mm, let's get up here and heal Alvar. Maya, inspire. Let's see how much trouble we're gonna have actually hitting them. 
could be fairly difficult. Who will last longer, the Will-O-Wisp or Alvar? Fine. There we go. I don't need anyone's sympathy. Well, you do need some healing, though, Alvar. Oh, we forgot to loot those boars. So I think her hut is like right down here. Let's keep going on this path. Oh yeah, okay, so this is kind of like a little abandoned village down here, and it's full of wisps, will-o'-wisps, I think. Behead! Kane, we'll send you and Leopard just have to, to the to crater. Force. Oh, his, uh, Intimidate succeeded. Nice. If, if we proc that often, that's gonna be nice. I wasn't sure, that's from the, uh, the feet. Cornigon? Called? Cornig. Where is it? Cornigon Smash. And he attacks with his power attack, which is pretty much every attack. We have that on all the time. Intimidate check is a free action to demoralize your opponent. That's nice. Now he's. Shaken? Yeah. Cool. I'll split you I wasn't sure if you know how often that would actually happen for us but it's nice to see it, it at least happening that time um, let's let's use a uh, burning arc in here Alright, Leopard, finish off this grater. Or maybe not. We're not gonna finish it off. Do a thunder call. Alright. I'm doing a better job of not canceling that thunder call by accident. Just let the animation go. I try to speed it up. Aim carefully. Nice. Die, die, die. Okay, we can finish this guy real time. Yes. Love it when fights just go like I shall no problem. Fail. Um One of my bad habits is trying to save all of our healing spells and just using up our scrolls that we bought, but we might as well use this stuff. Because eventually we'll need to camp and replenish anyway. Okay. I think we must have passed the witch's hut. Maybe it's still up over here. Okay. I can see my Keep going. Privacy. Dead man staggers toward you. There is a gaping hole in the middle of his chest, and you can see the white of bone through the tears in his decayed flesh. He speaks with a halting, gurgling wheeze. Living one, I do not want to harm you. Help me. Who are you? I was. I had a name. Dorsey. Had a bride. Now I'm no one. Alone. Less than no one. What happened to the village? The man groans, and you see his hands twitch and curl into fists. Fay, Damned Fay, Killed everyone. Every single one. Hate, hate them all, hate the Fae, hate the head man. Why do you hate Fae so much? The dead man's decayed hands sink into the edges of the huge hole on his chest. If I had a hole in my chest because of the Fae, I might dislike them a little bit too. The Fae stole my bride, killed her, killed me, the whole village, and the head man, the bastard, helped them. Sold his own daughter to the Fae. Nita, my love, evil, all of them, how I hate them. It's an undead! Kill it! How can I help you? The Fae said, I'll reach my final rest when two coins serve as my eyelids. Give me just two coins. Okay. 
Put regular gold coins over the dead man's eyes. Just two coins? Shouldn't be too hard. You put two coins over the dead man's eyes, but they fall from his sockets to the ground. The dead man hisses. All lies, damned fay, damned. Okay. Well, we'll leave you. We'll leave you alone. The dead man utters a helpless groan, stretched out, stretching out his arms toward you. Okay. Coins for a dead man's eyes. Apparently we need to find some special coins. Find a way to put the dead man to rest. We might be okay real-timing these, but we're kind of out of position. They're all going to focus on Kane there, which is not cool. Let the attack commence! Okay. Smear. There we go. Alright, one left. Everybody. Kill this boar. There we go. That one's just gonna run right by Alvar. It's actually when glitter dust this group. And let's just kill this one right here. Um, let's make sure we've got studied target going. No fear. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, Bruin. Forwards. Laura, let's come clear up here. And hit him with color spray. Did we? Oh. Hmm. I thought it showed like three hits on the of the color spray. So I didn't know if we hit one of our own. I guess not. Die, Anna. Die. We got another one incoming. Shoot, the lore is right there. Oh, nice. The leopard just had that tassel worm for dinner. Ultimate wave. We don't have any inspiration going. Let's do that. You've made your choice. Nice, Ken. Okay, I'm gonna make Aim sure Alora gets oh, moved away from here a little bit. Let the attack commence. We could probably. Oh, there we go. Okay. Tatsel worms. Tatsel dead. Okay. Anything else right down here? I think we must be getting close to the bottom of the map here. I can see my destination. Yeah. I've spotted something. Nice. Nice little loot there in the log. Okay. So let's back up here see if we can a doubt. talk to this witch this house differs from the others it's the only one that looks habitable a low almost defeated fence rings it smoke rises from the chimney and you can smell what could be a stew heavily spiced even glass windows adorned with drapes are intact a small dented brass bell hangs near the front gate and a well-swept path leads from the gate to the door of the house along the side of the house lies a garden Vegetables, it seems, and in the middle of the garden, you see a scarecrow with black stones for eyes and a wicked grin stitched on its burlap face. Um, let's see if there's any enchantments on this gate. The gate and the bell bear a simple enchantment that alerts the caster, presumably the owner of the house, about uninvited guests. That scarecrow looks like it might be trouble. 
The scarecrow's aura is strong, almost like a lightning flash to your senses. It is not a bundle of sticks and rags. It's a dangerous ward to protect the home from trespassers. Anyone here? No matter how loud you shout, no one answers. We could try to throw a pebble at the window. We could just ring the bell. What? In everlasting damnation. After a few moments, the door creaks open and an old woman with a tangle of gray hair and greenish skin steps out. I don't need anyone's okay. sympathy. Want to talk? So, what in damnation are you doing here? The old woman squints at you with disapproval. Her hair is a tangle of gray and her wrinkled skin is an unusual shade of green. Both her eyebrows and ears taper to points. I'm looking for a lost child. Have you seen him by chance? A boy? What would I do with a brat? Pickle him in, in a jar? That's rich. She gives a rattling laugh. Where is it written, if an old woman likes a little peace and quiet, she must be a child-stealing witch? Who knows what could have snatched up a child. Mayhap he's been eaten by goblins or lured to the swamp by the wandering lights. Or maybe his poor, sobbing mother with all her false tears strangled him in his sleep, then put him into bed with a shovel somewhere deep in the forest and now looks for someone to mantle the blame. Go to her, squeeze answers from her, make her tell where her whelp is, but don't be bothering me. Failed a perception check. Her answer rings with indignation, but you can't tell if it is genuine or not. Who are you? Me? Eh, I'm just a harmless old woman, hoping for some peace and quiet. The old bell dame, they call me, and that's fine. I've been called worse in my life. Why are you asking? What fool's errand brings you all the way out here? I've got a question for you. Just look at him. He's got a question. What makes you think I have any answers for one such as you, scrabbling at my door like a beggar? Have you done anything good for me recently? You've nothing for me, and you're nothing to me. How can I help you, good woman? Well, now we're talking. Much better than poking around where you don't belong, nattering on like a fool. Here, look. She pulls a black, oddly wrinkled mushroom from a bag on her belt. It has an odd smell about it that makes your eyes tear up. This, this is a black rattle cap. The spore pods inside, best thing for the lungs and the skin, me, I use them for tea. They're rare, though, but they grow thickest at the mud bowl east of here. Get me at least ten, yes, ten, then we'll talk. Okay, mud bowl has been revealed. Good riddance. Okay, that's right. She's got a bunch of errands for us. Wish doesn't seem to know anything about the missing child. She may be pretty cranky, but she didn't seem to be lying, so where's the kid, and why would Jenna accuse the old lady? We have to talk to her at Capital Tavern. Okay, that's why I was thinking we needed to talk to Jenna, but it's after we've already investigated this witch. Okay. So we need to find coins for the dead zombie man with the hole in his chest. I think maybe... Let us bide our time. This would be a decent time to use protection from electricity. I'm pretty sure there's more wisps down here. Last 10 minutes. Let's see, also I let's put another heroism on Kane. Oh, speaking of wisps. My destination. I think one comes out of this well, doesn't it? You suppress the shiver as you approach the well. The air around it is thick with the smell of decay. As you try to identify the sores, you suddenly catch whispers and ragged scratching noises emanating beneath the lid of the well. The rotting wooden cover has been crudely hammered shut with heavy iron nails. Detect magic. Let's see if this well bears any enchantments. An aura of death magic hangs about the well. The aura runs strong and deep, emanating from the bottom of the well itself. Okay, knock on the lid. A flurry of whispers erupts beneath the lid, and for a moment you feel faint, but you take a breath and focus. Blocking out the whispers, your momentary disorientation subsides. Pry open the lid. Why not? As you pry open the lid, it splinters away and a, s a foul stench bursts forth. You feel a vicious, evil presence rushing towards you. The words have passed! Okay, I'm glad we used that scroll. We might be all be dead. War Wisp. Ancient Willow Wisp. Okay. 
Well, we'll see if we can handle these things. It, I think, physical damage. Like, I don't think our magic is gonna do anything on them. Okay, well, <laughs> we tried to fight the Will-O-Wisps that come out of this well, and we had them down. There's three of them. Killed two of them and had the last one down to just a sliver of health, and we could not kill it. I finally, I put it on real time, and he just, he killed all six of us eventually. We just could not get a hit in. So, I'm going to redo this fight and... Probably just skip to the end, hopefully, where we actually kill them. I'll just have to resort to brute force. Okay, we finally beat the ancient will o wisp, but this thing was tough. We died the first time because I I killed the first two and I was confident then that we could kill this guy and we put it on real time and just got destroyed. So had to go through it again and micromanage it a little bit better and we were able to kill him. The one thing I did learn that I don't know why I was thinking that magic missiles, that the Will-O-Wisps were immune to the magic missiles, but they're not. That's like the one, seemed like the one magic thing that Allura could actually hit them with. So we'll have to remember that going forward. We finally managed to kill them. We got the coins, so we can go back and see if we can do anything with this guy up here now. We can put these coins in his face. We get two coins with Wilbur's name and one with Calitropsia's. Okay, we found some coins at the bottom of the well. Well, here, have a look. The dead man starts to shake, either with silent laughter or with silent sobs. You cannot tell. Yes, there I see. He points at two of the coins. These. Give me these. Okay. Put the cursed coins on the dead man's eyes. The coins evaporate. The coins on his eyes turn into mist. The dead man gives a rattling sigh, then slumps to his knees. Thank you. Cloak of resistance plus two. Nice. Somebody ought to be able to use that cloak. Um, he's got the one with the plus four resistance. Poison, sleep, and paralysis plus two to natural armor. About Enna. Okay, that's an upgrade for her. Probably everybody else already has plus one cloak. Got this belt of physical perfection, plus two enhancement to strength, dexterity, and constitution. Um, well, that would definitely be plus for him. Yeah, gets one more AC from that. And then somebody else used that constitution belt. Where's Kane? Got strength. I uh, would probably want to leave that on him. Okay. That takes care of those wisps. I think. Well, I'm actually going to see if we can successfully camp right here. It'll let us. Oh, we can loot this guy, too. Masterwork hand axe. Okay, we were attacked while camping by a giant slug, and there were some like invisible, like alligators, that were sort of like showing up. We never actually fought them, so I don't know. They left, I guess. And as now is at death's door as well as Kane, but I'm hoping we can clear out the rest of this area without having to I will guide. go take care of that. I'm going to head back down here to this like, abandoned village. Here we go. Wolves down here, or wargs. Oh. 
get right in there with the trip on Alvar. Why is Bruin? It seems like his movement is like. Okay, there. Like, his, his reach is like really shortened. You've made your choice. Okay. okay, we killed a group of wargs here. It wasn't Let us bide our real time. pretty. We've got issues here. Don't know. Okay, Focus let's keep plugging away here. In front of the ruined temple, you see a ghost, an old man walking the grounds. Noticing you, he smiles and nods. Dorsey said you'd sold your sold your daughter to the Fae. Is it true? Dorsey, huh? That's the one to listen to? Ha! Huh. That rascal would have, have some tales to tell, no doubt. He was her fiancé, you see. Rich, handsome. He was courting her, and then all of a sudden she changed her mind about being wed. My Anita went for a walk in the woods and found a new love there, one of the Fae. Naturally drove Dorsey into a rage, screaming the Fae had charmed her away, but think a moment. What man can compare with the beauty of the Fae? Nita left Dorsey of her own free will. Hmm, okay. Well, we gave him the coins. <laughs> Which curse? Why are you saying these horrid things? We never had any curses here. Aristil forbid. What? What are you talking about? Coins? Forgive an old man. My memory is not what it was. What were we talking about? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Jeez. You want to know about me? Name's Wilbur. Wilbur Colton. I'm the head man of this place. You're not locals, are you? Welcome. The old man gestures around the ruins and his smile fades. I'm dead, right? And all the rest as well? I keep forgetting. That's old age for you. Can you tell me what happened here? Happened? Where? <laughs> ah, the village. Aye, something bad happened here. Problem is, I can't remember a thing. Everything was going along just as it should. I was preparing for my daughter's, my daughter Nita's wedding, and then all went dark. I must have passed on before the village was destroyed. Your daughter married one of the Fae? Maybe she did. By the time of the wedding, by the time of wedding, I had passed. Still, a Fae marriage wasn't unheard of here in the village. Fae lived close in the woods. Trysts happened. Love bloomed. Children were born. Take Elga Verniex, for instance. Her mom conceived her in the forest. Her father, a satyr of all things. Elga was born with greenish skin and sharp ears. Ah, but so sharp. Pretty she was. Wish I knew what's happened to her. That must be the, the witch up there. Old Bel Beldame. Oh, we've got... Remember now there's like poison... My destination. Poison issues over here. Yeah. Uh, we don't have anything like... Oh, there's a giant slug up there. Alright, let's walk back around this direction. So we've got two hodag-like tree ants here. Oh, that's this is what I saw when we were camping. They were invisible. Smear. Probably should have put some healing on Alvar. It's close. It just needs one more hit. May I see we could. Okay, I was gonna say we could use a magic missile when it came around to it if we needed to, but we didn't need to. Calls. There's multiple giant swords. Kind of used up a lot of fire on those preamps. That's good though. Okay, another burning arc. But they're just gonna sit there. I guess we gotta send Alvar in there closer. Glad we got that acid protection on him at least. Burn. Thunder call. Okay, we're sending so Kane. Well, that was almost enough to kill it. Magic missile. We'll kill it before it comes around its turn. Go, go. 
Okay. We killed them. I can see my destination. I think we're gonna have to send somebody in here to this mist. See what's over there. We do have a body down here. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Scythe tree. Okay. Chaotic evil, level 16 plant. Wow, I, I don't know if we can draw it out of there or if we have to go to it. So I think we'll send Leopard over there and see if we can draw that thing out. There are many roads to success. Can't remember. I, I like I kind of remember fighting this, but I don't remember if it'll come to us if we engage. Okay, it does move. Oh, jeez. Well, that's not good though. Um. I actually swapped to her bow, her longbow. She can't get close enough though to shoot. Alright. Hope that we don't lose aggro and he keeps moving over here. I don't know if we can even kill this thing. Alvar, just hold there. We need to just bring it a little closer if we can. I don't know, it's gonna have a huge reach on it um, blessing Kane's gonna need big hits with that I wonder if the acid from the troll reaper is good or not seems like it might be I'll just have to resort to brute force oh what really you couldn't hit him from there Okay. Laura, I wish we had more fire left. Do we have we have a wand? Fireball, yeah. Okay, and now we really need some big hits. No fear. Like that. 102. Yes. Okay. Oh, he's taking constitution damage. Twenty-four, good. If we can keep. Oh man, if we can avoid those. Kane can get one more big hit next time. Ooh, that could have been bad. Got the attack of opportunity there on that. Okay, Kane, let's go. Yeah, just you kill this thing. Ooh. Oh man. Oh, so close. Magic missile, maybe. Could do it. Oh man. It's got to be down to like one. Oh, jeez. Just wiped out Bruin. Okay. Wow. Everyone counts on me. And just taking constitution damage there. Let's get everybody out of that stuff. Send somebody in. Let us not hesitate. Loot. Need his letter. An old wedding ring. Okay. More Let stuff back here. On. Cypress Queen's flower. Nice. Wanda burning arc. Okay. I'll come in handy. Boy, she might die. Shoot. Her constitution's got to be really low right now. Anything else here? Okay. Dang it. All right, get out of there. <laughs> All right, I kind of wanted to finish out the rest of this area, but man, I don't know. So much here. Okay, I think we've got to just try to make camp here to get us through. If the witch will keep watch for us 
while we sleep. Okay, we were attacked again while camping by some bears, but we killed them. The witch and the scarecrow helped us. Let's see where we're at with this constitution damage. We've got Amaya and Cain both with problems there. Let's use a couple more of these restoration scrolls. These lesser ones are pretty cheap. Might as well use them. Okay. Wow, we've got a lot of our party at death's door. Without a doubt. Okay, I've been playing for a while. I'm getting careless. We we walked up here, um, got Together killed, we stand. killed by a warg. Tried to just let it go on real time, and Kane, Kane was killed. Take care of our constitution issues. Everything has a price. Okay, we've got some mud leaf here. Done. I think this Come is one me. of the things that the witch needs. You know, in my last playthrough, we got people Damn. talking to us here. I don't know if I ever found... Done. I know I didn't. I never found all the things she was looking for. Oh, here we go. I remember these two. As you approach the grove, you hear two voices in soft conversation. The first is a velvet baritone begging on the brink of tears. Please, Teresa, Ter Teresia, my love, don't send me away. I'd rather die than... I want you to live, a girl's voice says sharply. Falcos, you are my knight in shining, shining armor. I love you like I've never loved anyone before. But if you stay, you'll... you'll. The girl's voice falters and she collapses into sobs. Wait, there's someone here. Show yourself. Approaching, you notice a fey couple, a satyr and a dryad who watch you with an anxious look. Who are you? My name is Teresia. I've lived here since my tree awoke from the earth and first sought the sun. And this is Falcos from far away. We are... We are together, the satyr nods, and we'll stay together till death takes us. The dryad narrows her eyes at Falcos and folds her arms. Can't you do without the death part? I managed so far, he grins widely. What were you arguing about? These lands could be beautiful again, but not as long as this monster exists. Falcos' hand curls into a fist. We cannot leave. We must fight. My sweetheart, my love, Terestia's voice trembles on the verge of tears. You've tried already and barely survived. Please, I'll endure. I'll go to sleep again. If you were to die, it will hurt me far more than if I let you go, knowing you're far away, but alive and well. Look at me, Teresia. I'll, I'll never leave you, never. I beg you, don't send me away. Being without you, it'll kill me as surely as the scythe tree itself. The scythe tree won't leave us be. Simply being brave is not enough to defeat it, Falco. Sooner or later, it will kill you. The dryad turns to you, hopeful. I beg you, put an end to the creature. End our suffering and its suffering as well. We'll find a way to reward you. Well, I've got good news. Scythe tree will trouble you no more. Falcos gives you a wide grin while Teresia wipes away a tear. May you know peace, my queen. We've got a new research event on the scythe tree. We thank you. Here's your reward. Gold, jade, moonstone, citrine. Okay. What happened to the village? The dryad gives a heavy sigh and closes her eyes as if remembering. It was a beautiful place, a human village on the edge of the real fey kingdom. They lived in peace alongside the Fae for generations, united by friendship, sometimes even by love. The Dryad looks away. That is, until our queen, Cal Calitropsia, lost her heart to the headman's daughter. Such a beautiful couple. But it happened at their wedding day. Both humans and Fae had gathered to celebrate the union. No one knows what happened next, but in the midst of the festivities, Calitropsia suddenly transformed. She changed into a monster. The dryad's voice drops and she glances around as if afraid another might hear. She became the scythe tree. She killed her bride, her love, then destroyed the village. Humans fled or were killed, same with Fae. Our kingdom fell in a heartbeat. I couldn't leave my tree so I slept for many years until I awoke to the sound of pipes playing such beautiful music. A girl from the village married a dryad? Your world and the world of the Fae are great and wide, yet rarely do they touch. It is unfortunate, for when they do, great joy is possible, not simply between two souls, but more so when a third arises from their love, a child either born or found. 
Here, for instance, when my tree and I were far younger than we are now, a girl lived here. Elga Verniax. She was the daughter of the woman from the village. Her father, a satyr. We loved her so much, watching her grow, laugh, learn. But her mother took her and left. So we heard about Elga, and I was thinking that this was the witch down there. If she still lives, she's certainly forgotten all about us. Her poor father missed her so much, the grief never left him. It was in his eyes when he passed. The dryad is silent for a moment, averting her eyes, then turns to face you again. Humans and Fae both love and love strongly, and we feel the same pain when we are cut off from the ones we hold in our hearts. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of thinking that this is all a, a story about our witch friend down there. I don't think I ever really finished that whole quest with her my other playthrough and learn everything about her. Well, I'm glad we took care of the scythe tree ahead of time for them. We've got owl bears over here. Man, I don't know if I want to deal with all these angry beasts left in this area. I guess we have to do what needs to be done. Without a doubt. I appreciate privacy. Bushes in the way here. <laughs> Everybody's there are blocked. Many I guess that's why it, there was like an athletics check down here, I think, that I saw before. I spy. There. What do I Man, spy? I kind of doubt if we're going to get through that, but I guess we'll try. That pose, no little challenge. No. All right, we did. Days. Never a dull moment. Ah, okay. Owl bears. Three of them. Wow. Okay, so we went down here and we went through a. There's an athletics check to get through kind of a row of bushes, and there were three owl bears up there, and that just destroyed us. So we've been here a long time. I think it's time to take a break. We we have to come back to this area anyway. Uh, so we're gonna leave the rest of this. We've got to clear out. Just there's owl bears here. There were some wargs down here, but the owl bears. There were three of them, and they just wiped us out. So we'll be done here for now and come back at a later point to clear out this area. We're gonna need to head back home and fix all these death's door issues before we get back on task. Thanks a lot for being here and watching. I know this is probably gonna be a long episode. I'll have to uh, cut out some things. I really appreciate you watching and I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.